good morning good afternoon and good evening everyone to the channel IT simplified I hope you find the videos useful and uh, subscribing to the channel uh, the topic for today is Azure ADDS also known as Azure Active Directory domain services so today I will just try to explain uh, what it is and uh, in what scenarios you can use that I will also show you the steps involved when it comes to configuring we won't go through the actual deployment, but uh, I will uh, show you the steps involved. So as the name suggests, it is Active Directory Domain Services. In certain way, it is similar to the Windows Active Directory, though there are certain differences which I'm going to highlight. But the whole idea about this application or the services actually is that it is a pass offering. It's a platform as a service offering from uh, uh, Microsoft Azure so if you don't need to worry about the underlying infrastructure Microsoft will make sure that it's uptime uh, it's backed up and uh, it's load balanced and it's highly available so as you can see that there can be some confusion with the name domain services in this uh, and uh, uh, why you should be using that so number one reason why you should be using this is that obviously uh, if you want to uh, if you talk about domain services, the first thing comes to your mind is the domain controller. So if you don't want to manage that, you don't want to deploy that in availability set maybe, and uh, you want to have the owners on Microsoft to manage all those things, definitely you will need uh, Azure Active Directory domain services. And the second and the most important reason is that uh, what we see is there are a lot of applications which still need uh, Kerberos authentication. They need to have LDAP query. Uh, which we are so uh, you know dependent upon on a lot of application and even in enterprise we see that uh, uh, there's a lot of dependencies on those services so if you need that kind of uh, support one way is that you deploy a domain controller on a virtual machine or maybe an availability set for high availability or the other option is to deploy or to use Azure Active Directory uh, domain services so this is Azure cloud and when you deploy this Azure AD domain services Microsoft will deploy two domain controller for you it will be load balanced and you will access these uh, uh, domain controller through the through the uh, Windows administrative features which you can deploy on any virtual machine or any domain joint virtual machine that uh, that you can have uh, in the system and uh, as I said that there's also certain differences between Windows Active Directory and uh, Azure AD domain services now this is a managed service so it's a managed service so it means that Microsoft will be managing this you don't have the administrative or uh, or you don't have actually the enterprise or domain uh, level kind of privileges when we're talking about these domain controllers because Microsoft needs to have that so that uh, to just to make sure that uh, you don't any way you know uh, impact whatever uh, we need to have this as a platform as a services but yes you can domain join the virtual machines you can have the group policy in place you can create your custom OUs so all those good things you can do but you won't have the administrative or that uh, domain uh, uh, privileges that you can have now another major difference is that uh, you cannot extend schema so it's a standalone service so you cannot extend schema and there is no uh, trust uh, if you're talking about when we talk about uh, forests and domain in Microsoft you can you know that we can have uh, multiple domain we can have uh, uh, multiple forest you can have a two-way trust or one-way trust not that that functionality is not there because that's not the idea about this of the services that the idea about this service is that if your application have those kind of dependencies from the identity which need Kerberos authentication or L do want to do LTAP query you can do that so that they, these are uh, those uh, options are not there so you cannot have a, a two-way or one-way trust or you cannot extend the schema so that's not there but you can domain join your virtual machines 
you can apply group policies same way that you are so used to you can create custom OUs right you have the groups so all those things you'll be able to do that right so that's what it is Azure AD domain services uh, and uh, as I said that because of the acronym sometimes there's a confusion between Windows Active Directory and Azure AD domain services okay so at least that is clear so let me just go to the Azure portal and uh, show you how the experience is uh, so if you just do a quick search for domain services it will take you to this page and you can just go and hit create Azure AD domain services now it will create by default and dot on Microsoft account but if you want to have specific uh, DNS domain name definitely you can give a name so I'm just going to give my domain name say it simplified dot ca uh, pick your subscription like always we need to create a resource group so I'll name it pick your location and click OK you need to deploy these domain services in a virtual network so you can create a custom one for yourself You can also give a subnet name. Click OK. And uh, and uh, for administrative groups, so this person. Uh, or you can also add uh, multiple users depending upon what kind of uh, access you want to give this person will have the complete control on how he may want to manage these uh, domain services in my case it is Girish Sharma it's okay but if you want you can obviously add that and uh, you can add that's from your Azure Active Directory uh, that you have but uh, I will leave that to the default And here you can have uh, synchronization so synchronize all your user groups so if you pick all all the users groups uh, that you have maybe in Azure AD will be synchronized if you do the scoped option uh, you can specify which specific uh, groups or user you want only to uh, only to uh, sync with this uh, services so just let me just explain one more thing so you if you have uh, so you might having some you know users in Azure AD and uh, uh, the groups in these uh, these services when you deploy these services if you do the all option all these users that that there that will be synced and all the hardware hash uh, will be uh, sorry the password hash will be synced with the Azure AD domain services if you do the all option if you want to only specify only specific users or groups for them password hash needs to be synchronized you can you can pick the scope option so that's what it's all in scope just want to point out one more thing so you you might be having a scenario in which you have an on-prem windows active directory and uh, what you can do is that you can deploy ad connect but this way it will sync all the hardware or all the password hash to the Azure AD and once it is there you can you can when you deploy these uh, AD domain services it will it will be synced with that so that's what it is so you might having the scenario in which you just have an Azure AD you don't have anything on prem so that was all and scoped option was there and if you have on prem and you want to sync to the Azure AD because that's will be the first uh, uh, point you are going to sync all your identities from on prem into the Azure AD by using AD Connect uh, feature uh, and uh, from there when you deploy the Azure AD domain services those services will be will be synced with that so you can skip certain users in the group 
or if you want you can uh, you can uh, select all the option or all the users in the group which is uh, by default that was a, that was the case right and when you click ok you get uh, a summary so you get your domain name your resource group your virtual network your subnet uh, your administrative group so you get all the complete functionality of this and once you click ok uh, and uh, just a heads up when I was trying to test this out it will take on an average of one to one and a half hour to deploy all these services so just a heads up in case it's taking some time it is pretty normal so don't worry about that it will take one one and a half hour to to deploy all these services and once those services are deployed you will see that you'll get two domain controller and depending upon the virtual network I have used I'll get an IP of, uh, in this case, dot .4, and for the other one will be dot .5, right? And you might, might need to do the DNS update. It will all guide you through the steps when, when that uh, installation is taking place. But you'll get two, uh, two uh, domain controller DNS servers because this is also acting as a DNS server. And these will be the two IPs depending upon the virtual network and the subnet that you have chosen. In my case, it was with slash 16 and slash 24 subnet. And once this is deployed, you can deploy another virtual machine. And you can deploy the, uh, uh, that's a feature which is there. Uh, the Windows, uh, I think it's Windows 80 admin feature domain services feature to manage this so the 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 way we create the group policies or you so you get the complete control and you can manage the good thing is that you don't need to manage these uh, domain controller because this is a managed service it will be taken care by Microsoft in the in the back end so very important and uh, another important thing is when you start deploying uh, your other servers in the domain right so maybe this is your SQL server Maybe this is a file server. This can be your RDS server or maybe application server. You can domain join these uh, machines with the, with the domain controller. And when you domain join, you just want to make sure that under the VNet that we created, we created a subnet for this uh, domain services subnet. You'll need to create another subnet under which these uh, these all the other machines will be there so you need to have a second uh, subnet within within the virtual network of uh, domain services but the good thing is you can domain join you can manage this and everything will be working the way you want it and you can use those same uh, Kerberos authentication LDAP query you can do and uh, you can take your time maybe to uh, you know rewrite the codes on your application so that they are maybe compatible in the future with the new OAuth or SAML, uh, the protocol that they use for Azure AD, but you can use Azure AD domain services for, for the purpose which I have explained. So at least I believe this gives an idea and let me show you just quickly uh, the pricing also. So to price this out, it goes by how many objects you have. Uh, in your in your environment so if you go to the pricing calculator you should be able to see the identity and it's a bit hidden it's in Azure Active Directory and if you scroll you see that you have the domain services so if you go and expand you have uh, three tiers of label you have uh, 0 to 25,000 these are the directory objects 25,000 and plus and uh, 100,000 and plus and uh, the price is on and because it's a pass services so I'll take this that is working 24-7 uh, 31 days a month and if I change maybe the currency so for the first option it's around about uh, this much price And if I go to the second tier and the third tier, right? So that's how that's how the price is based on. But uh, the good thing is you don't need to worry about those uh, DCs that you deploy. 
uptime, load balancing, high availability will be all taken care uh, for you by, by Microsoft. So this was uh, Azure Active Directory Domain Services in nutshell and under what scenarios you can use it. I hope this video was useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.